So here's another issue with the M1 Apple Silicon MacBook Pro. Well, it does work really well for a lot of things. I don't think it's a good replacement for professionals as of now, because check this out. So I'm trying to render this intro that I made. And it looks fine here, but once I render it out, which I have just done, look what happens to it. that and this is the second time I rendered it to H264 it's the first time so there's clearly something going on with the graphics um, portion of it when it's trying to render out so it's not quite there and these are of course things that render perfectly fine on my Intel MacBook Pro sitting under all those fluff toys over there so yeah, so professional workflow, absolutely not. I mean, I'd say you'd have to, again, get it and then test it with all your plugins and all your stuff because most plugin companies haven't updated it to work with Apple Silicon, Big Sur. Some plugins have updated to work with Big Sur on the Intel Macs, but if you try and do anything on the Apple Silicon Macs, you might run into issues such as this, which is really frustrating because it doesn't show up on preview. So like you think it's fine and it actually plays back, like editing it was really easy on on this machine. It seemed just as snappy, if not snappier in some cases, but then rendering out is just... And this is definitely a plugin thing because if I don't use any of the plugins that I used to make this, then it would be fine. So again, if you're heavy plug-in workflow, then this is not quite ready for it yet. Wait a little bit more, wait for support to come out so you for sure know that you're gonna be fine. All right, hopefully that helped. So should you change to a M1 Apple Silicon MacBook Pro? The answer is if you're a professional and you work with very specific plugins, then the answer is go test it because it's likely not going to work the way you need it to work. So the answer is no. But if you test all your plugins and they do work just fine, then in your case, the answer is yes. But it's important to go get those tests done. So should you get it? If you're a professional and you rely on your machine to make you money, then I would say hold on, go test it at least if you're really interested like I was, I mean, I was really, really, really interested in the M1 and I was really hoping it would replace my 15 inch Intel MacBook Pro. But as of now, it just cannot replace all the functionality. It doesn't run everything as smoothly as I had hoped, even though it does outperform my older MacBook significantly in the areas that it can do its work. So if you are just a media consumer or just a light user, or someone who does some professional work but doesn't use a lot of plugins, then yes, the M1 will work really well for you, but it just won't work with some plugins and it won't work with some software, even with Rosetta 2. So that's very important to understand. Rosetta 2 is great. It works with a lot of Intel apps. It works with a lot of the bigger apps, like all the Adobe suite works perfectly fine, but it won't work for some apps. So as you've seen, some of the plugins look like they work, they appear to work, but they don't actually work when you render them out. So um, it's not quite there yet. And it also can't run some of the other software such as my VJ software, which I use to throw on light shows while I DJ. That's you. That's you. At gigs. So that's a bummer because I was really hoping it would be able to and I'm hoping support for that comes in the future because the graphics performance of the M1 chip, even though it is integrated graphics, still outperforms my 15-inch MacBook Pro with discrete graphics. It, its integrated graphics outperforms the discrete GPU and the integrated graphics on the older MacBook Pro, the larger one. So it's not that this one lacks the graphical power. It definitely has the muscle. It has the raw power. It's just 
none of the apps have been optimized to use integrated graphics to the extent that they can now. So I'm waiting for support for that to come out and I think I'm going to go ahead and return this MacBook for now because I don't know when support's gonna come out and right now, as you've seen, this thing is basically, it's useless for my workflow. It's a great consumption device, but if I need to do work with it, I, I can't do it. It renders out funny, it's, it's just not usable for me as of now. So again, very important, go test it out. I mean, Apple has a great return policy, so there's nothing to lose. Just go grab it, plug it in, uh, put all your apps on it, try it out. If it works, hooray, great, because this is an awesome piece of machine. It's an awesome piece of kit here. But if it doesn't work, which it likely won't if you use a lot of third-party stuff, then yeah, tough luck, send it back, wait for everything to update, maybe wait for the next version of it to come out. And um, yeah, so hopefully that helped your buying decision because I know I really wanted this to work so I had to go try it out myself and nobody was answering these questions. Do they work with plugins? Um, the answer is not really, kind of, sort of, but not for all. And for the ones that do look like they're working, might not actually work, so um, be wary. Go test it out yourself. Thanks for watching. Before I go, I'm sure everybody is curious about the 720p webcam that is still on these brand new MacBooks. It's ridiculous how they haven't gone up yet. I think the buck has to stop here. I know people have been making a fuss about it and I totally agree. For a expensive premium machine, there is no way, no world where a 720p camera is acceptable. Even if you tweak the image processing so that it's technically better. So right now you can see this is a 720p camera. Is it the worst thing ever? It's not the worst 720p camera out there, but this is 2020. This is ridiculous. 1080 at the very minimum. Come on, guys. If you guys can squeeze a 1080p or 4K camera in a phone, I mean, I know phones are thicker, but I'm sure you can figure it out, put it on the top bezel there, which is still huge, by the way. Either you shrink the bezel or you make the camera better. You can't have a fat bezel and a terrible camera. It's, it's terrible. Um, okay, so if you guys want to see more in-depth testing, because I know this was a very general kind of breakdown of do plugins work, because that was my main question, do plugins work? Um, if you want to see the use cases where they do work and on what version of Final Cut versus what version doesn't work, and if there's a difference between the versions of Final Cut on Apple Silicon and on Intel, because there are, then go check out my in-depth review, which will be coming out a little bit later. I have to go through, sift through everything and edit it all, but I recorded a lot of it yesterday while I was just throwing everything I could at this computer. So yeah, if you want to check out the in-depth stuff, stay tuned. And if you watch this and you've decided that, hey, the M1 Max sounds perfect for me, but which one should I get? The Air, the Pro, or the Mini? Well, stay tuned because I have a buyer's guide coming out that is actually going to be useful for real world like use it's not just benchmark based because i think a lot of the videos i see right now are benchmark based or the professionals who are like hey you know great for video editing and it might be great for just pure video editing with no plugins whatsoever but again if you are a professional and this is a very blanket statement this is a very generalized statement but in general if you are a professional you probably use Plugins. I'm not saying all professionals use plugins, but I'm saying most professionals use plugins. So if you use plugins, they are not going to work very well with, with, I mean, you've seen it. I showed, I showed you earlier. So I will show you more of that and what it actually means and uh, all the different versions and what, what uh, it entails and the likelihood of things coming out in the future and working. So, um, yeah, if you need more information, just stay tuned. And yeah, keep watching the current content on these MacBooks. There's so much coverage on them, but just keep in mind when people say certain things like, oh, the performance is better. Is it just on benchmarks or is it real world use? And by real world use, is it real world use or is it what people think real world use is? Again, a professional video editor is probably not just going to use the bare bones NLE to edit their stuff. I mean, you can, but once you 
get a little bit more into it, you're going to start using plugins and stuff. And for those people, it's, it's just not there yet. So just be careful of the hype because there's a lot of hype and rightly so. I'm not knocking against Apple. Like this is an amazing piece of hardware. There are areas where clearly they need to improve on. Like it's a little bit dated, the physical chassis. But aside from that, the internals are amazing and we're just waiting for compatibility to catch up just as everybody expected. So if you're looking to upgrade your current computer, if you can hold on to it, just hold on, hold on till everything is fine. And then maybe go ahead and upgrade to the M1 or be, maybe by then there'll be an M1X or an M2 chip or something like that. And that will be significantly better than these ones. So there's a there's a reason to hold out. And I'm not just saying, oh, hold out because something better is going to come around next year or something, because that's always true with tech. Like whatever year you get it, something better is going to come out. But in this case, this is a Gen 1 product and there is no support for a lot of the things that we need support for. So it is not wise to just jump on a new platform unless unless you are 100 percent sure it's going to work for everything that you need it to. So this M1 MacBook Pro is certainly not a replacement for a larger 15 or 16 inch MacBook Pro with a discrete GPU. And I explained that in the other videos a little bit more. So it's not a replacement, but it does manage to accomplish about 80% of what the other computer does. And it does so a lot better, a lot faster, a lot more efficiently with much longer battery life. So there's a lot to be said about it but if you need that last 20 percent of of graphics performance or computing power or plug-in support and stuff like that then you are out of luck for now so just hang tight i'm sure they will iron out the bugs here all right if this was helpful in any way please consider subscribing to my youtube channel i would really appreciate it give me a thumbs up if this video has helped you or answered any of the questions that you've been having and haven't been answered yet with the available content and um, I mean I'm, I'm pretty committed to helping helping the buyer out here I'm literally still in bed I just woke up and I was like okay I think I'm gonna get up and post this because I slept over it and I was like all right these are my thoughts and um, yeah okay so hopefully that was helpful I'll see you in the next one